Hello, I am Dr. Ragland of Zombie Hunter University. Today we are taking a look at the scientific minimalist approach to killing flaming zombies. Flaming Zombie is a boss zombie, the first boss that freshman students are likely to encounter. So let's take a moment to explain. Bosses have more health points than ordinary zombies, making them harder to kill. In exchange, they drop loot when they die in the form of weapons or armor. So you get some reward for the extra effort you put in. Flaming zombies spawn in the yellow, green, and blue zones to the west of the map, so freshman students are very likely to encounter them around Nastia's holdout, the very first outpost at the far western end of Fairview. There are many different weapons that could be used against flaming zombies. Scientific minimalism seeks the least extravagant option. In this case, we are looking at two pistols, the Webster 1942 and the CK-99. We've chosen these two because they are weapons that we would recommend students have in hand around Nastia's holdout, because each delivers enough damage per hit to kill any normal zombie in that vicinity with a single shot. There are other weapons that are more powerful that would be useful against a flaming zombie, but you're unlikely to own them just for the rare instance when you will encounter that particular boss. Our volunteer in this first research trial has chosen to go with the CK-99. Now the CK-99 does about 65 damage points per second. If you run the numbers with the health points for the burning zombie, this means that theoretically the weapon should fell the boss zombie in about 38 seconds. But we're going to see that practically this doesn't really happen for a number of reasons. First off, stats are a major concern for freshman students. You're not likely to have reloading stats in place. This means that there are going to be very long pauses during which the gun is not firing. As you watch this video, you can see that although the uh, volunteer is holding his finger on the trigger continuously, there are several points repeatedly when the gun simply is not shooting. So it's not going to kill the burning zombie as fast as you might like. Also, pistols and rifles for that matter, by their very nature, are loud. They attract the attention of other zombies. So frequently you are going to see the interlopers getting in the way, getting shot. Bullets intended for the burning zombie do not hit their target. Also, accuracy. That's another stat you have to worry about. Freshman students are unlikely to have any points in accuracy uh, when they're around Nastia's holdout or even Dog Stockade. So a lot of these bullets are going to go wide. End result of this is that almost two minutes later, the burning zombie is is finally near the point of death and I think it's just going to take a couple more shots there he goes yeah full two minutes instead of 40 seconds now it's time to go back and collect the loot uh, from the corpse we'll see what uh, the subject has earned as a reward for his labor back at dog stockade we see he got a cricket bat which scraps for a hundred dollars that's not very much and if we go to the marketplace to see how much he's going to have to pay to replace the bullets he used over a hundred bullets to kill that zombie and we see that a hundred bullets here in the marketplace costs over 300 bucks so this was not a profitable endeavor this is why we recommend using melee you can increase your profitability when you're boss hunting by not using ammunition in this case we're looking at the iron pipe which is a very low proficiency weapon just 20 points in melee is all that is required it does just as much damage per critical hit as the Webster and almost as much as the CK-99. However, Malay does not need reloading. Malay does not need accuracy. So it is far more likely that a beginning student will have this weapon in hand and optimized before encountering a flaming zombie. Here we see a second test subject in a blue zone near Nastia's holdout using the iron pipe. The strategy is fairly simple. Just walk backwards, and when the burning zombie gets close enough, hit it. The advantage here, obviously, is you do not need to be very skilled to outmaneuver the burning zombie. You don't need to circle around it and stay close. You can keep a safe distance, and whenever the distance starts to feel not so safe, a hit from the iron pipe should hopefully knock the zombie back a little bit, or at least stun him long enough for you to take a step and get out of reach before he can hit you. 
Big advantage with the iron pipe, as with all melee, is that it is silent. It will not attract the attention of other zombies. As you can see, there are a few milling about here on the street, completely oblivious to the fight going on amongst them. So you can keep your focus on your objective here, a mano a mano, one on one. No worry about not having a grinding weapon to take on a mass of zombies, because there just will not be a mass. And the burning zombie here is about to die, and that's it. Triumph. Here we see two more melee weapons. The shovel, with its higher DPS, is better for killing flaming zombies. However, we're not going to look at that one. We're going to look at the Chris instead, because essentially in the blue zones around Nastia's holdout, the Chris is superior for every other task that a freshman students may be facing. The Chris does the same damage per hit as the iron pipe, but strikes slightly faster, giving it a slight advantage. Let's see how it holds up against a flaming zombie. The disadvantage of the Chris is that it has a shorter reach, which negates the advantage, which is the faster striking speed. If you're always retreating and trying to stay out of reach, you're going to be striking at empty air half the time. So in order to use the Chris to its fullest advantage, you have to stay in close and circle, as you see here, which makes you a little bit more vulnerable to being hit if you slip up. So your dodging skills need to be up to par. Dodging skills are a little less important if you're using chainsaws, which constantly stun zombies, preventing them from striking you. We see here the Ronin Pro and the Steel MS-800. The Ronin is a chainsaw that students might get a hold of while they're in Nastia's holdout. Later on in Dog Stockade, they're likely to have the Steel MS-800. Let's take a look at how the latter one works against a burning zombie. First thing we notice is that chainsaws attract a lot of attention from other zombies. They are not silent, so for at least a certain amount of the time during this confrontation, you will not be going one-on-one -on -one with the flaming zombie. Fortunately, chainsaws are really good at handling low-level aggro, so you will be able to wipe out those interlopers and get back to focusing on your main target. As with the Chris, you see that it's necessary to stay in close and circle. You want to keep that chainsaw in contact with the flaming zombie as much as possible. I mean, preferably continuously. That's not likely to happen, but the more you can do, the closer you can get to that, the better you are. That way you get the full advantage of the DPS of the weapon. As we mentioned, chainsaws have the advantage of continuous stun and knockback. They do not pause to reload, so as long as you keep your finger on the trigger, they will keep running, keep grinding away at the zombie. You don't have to worry about striking at the exact right time to be effective. This makes them ideal weapons for use against flaming zombies in blue, green, and yellow zones around Nastia's holdout and Dog's stockade. We're going to end by bringing things full circle back to firearms, in this case rifles instead of pistols. Rifles have some of the same disadvantages, but in this case the SL-8, which is a very low-level rifle, requires only 20 proficiencies, has one big advantage over the pistols that freshman students are likely to have while they're at Nastia's holdout. SL-8 holds 30 rounds in its magazine, which means it can fire for half a minute without reloading. Let's see how this advantage translates into real-world application. Again, we have a volunteer test subject who is firing continuously, but unlike the situation with the CK-99 that we saw at the beginning, you aren't going to see very many pauses here while the weapon reloads because, as we mentioned before, the magazine size is so large. This means that freshman students who have not been able to put stat points into reloading are not going to be at a serious disadvantage. They can use this rifle and not worry that it's going to stop to reload just as the zombie takes a swing and hits them. This is probably preferred weapon for students who do not feel they have the dodging skills to go after one of these boss zombies with melee weapons. To sum up, the flaming zombie is the first boss that freshman students are likely to encounter. You could try to annihilate it with expensive machine guns or other heavy-duty weaponry, but why waste money on the ammunition? You can defeat a burning zombie with melee or with chainsaws. If those weapons don't work for you, use the SL-8 rifle.